to be reviewing our Camplex outdoor uh, stove today. Now, uh, as you can see, this is still brand new. I have not used it yet, so you guys will get to see the uh, actual first use. There'll be a couple of videos spliced together to show you uh, the whole process. I want to go ahead and take some video while it's daylight because I'm not planning to cook till it's dark. So over here, we have our adjustment for how high it is. You're gonna push here, pull back. There's a drawer, it comes out. You can see that we've got our grill bars and then we've got a tray underneath it to catch any of the fat and oil and whatnot cooking off of your food. Um, this drawer comes zip tied shut and it is actually kind of hard to get off. You've got to uh, cut the zip ties and pull real hard to get them to come out. Uh, I was very afraid of breaking the rails, um, but it came out fine. It just took a, a little bit of strength and effort. I couldn't find any other way to do it, so I think that's the only way. Um, right here, we have our ignition switch on, high, low. So the low is actually the furthest setting instead of the closest setting, which would be normal. Um, the hose does not come connected, of course. So you're gonna screw it on here and then connect it over to your propane tank. It does have an adapter to use one of those little camping propane tanks, uh, but judging by the instructions, you've got to check those for leaks and all kinds of stuff. So I think even if you were camping, if you could, you might want to bring a big propane tank that has a regulator just to save yourself the trouble. All right, and that's all the, for this video. We will do another one once we have it running and some food getting ready to go up. Okay, so this is just it on low power. That light you're seeing is the uh, the fire. You can see it streaming off the arc lighter uh, and gas port right there. It did take me a few tries to get it lit, and I actually had to change the regulator out for the one on my gas grill, but it is lit. Um, when you're holding it down, you're clicking, it'll make a different noise once it's lit. You'll kind of hear it. You don't hear the fire, but you hear a change in the click. All right, now before I put the steaks on, I want to show my uh, my drip pan here at the bottom. I actually have it on the very bottom of the unit. Uh, it's got butter, it's got garlic, it's got uh, rosemary, and we're gonna get our steak season our steak juices to drip straight into it. You can see that this thing is now significantly warm. Um, I'm a few inches away from it, but I can feel the heat, so it's gonna be interesting. Our steak, two of our steaks in now. We are gonna go 60 seconds with it up at the top. You can see that fire bursting down to the stakes. This is with it on high. I think it's gonna make a pretty good sear. All right, so our stakes are doing a five minute rest. We're gonna try and carefully remove our garlic and butter from the uh, oven while we do that. That way it won't burn because uh, it takes a lot more heat when the steaks aren't in between it. Alright, so we got that out pretty good. The steaks are sitting on top of it in the other pan. There's a nook on the top of this stove. I know you can't see it because of the dark, but there's like a nook where the pan pops in so that you can use it to get food hot and keep food hot. That is real, real hot. Uh, so we're letting it sit there for a couple minutes to come to temperature, and then we're going to put it back under and we're going to sear it uh, real hard again, and then it should be about ready. Just moved the steaks back in for their second round of searing. So this is the stage where they're really going to develop that crust. Um, basically what happens when the first time you cook it, it's going to start getting it hot. And then when you're letting it sit and it's coming to temperature, proteins are going to rush to the surface of that steak. And then when that fire hits it, they're going to caramelize those proteins and you're going to start getting your crust. So we should end up with a really crusty steak because of the dual cooking cycle. And so what we've done is take our steak pan sauce, run it through a sieve, and ended up with basically a butter and steak grease sauce. 